is our old buddy Lori Wallach with uh, with uh, Global Trade Watch and and excuse me TradeWatch.org as citizen.org slash trade uh, the uh, Lori is the executive director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch uh, PG excuse me PCGTW on Twitter or Wallach W A L L A C H Lori L O R I Lori welcome back tell us about you the last time we talked which was uh, it seems like a month or so ago. We were talking about uh, tips or trips, this, this uh, trips, this waiver that would allow basically poor countries that have the ability to manufacture or import uh, from other poor countries that can manufacture vaccines to make their own versions of these highly effective, uh, you know, like the AstraZeneca vaccine um, or the Pfizer vaccine. And uh, where is that at right now? So the good news is that 140 countries at the WTO support it, and it could really help scale up much more production of vaccines and treatments. And, Tom, that's crucial mm -hmm. because while life is starting to get back to normal here, Africa, parts of Latin America, parts of Asia are gripped with a third wave of COVID that is more brutal than either the previous two folks saw what was going on in India that's now happening all over Africa, that's happening in Peru and other parts of Latin America. And people there have a vaccination rate less than 1%. Wow. So it's a disaster. It's a disaster of death and the loss of livelihoods. And if you're in a poor country and you lock down, you starve. You become homeless. There is no reserve. So we've got to get more vaccine made. And just thinking of self-interest, any place, that the, any place that the virus is raging means a variant that could get around the vaccine could hatch. And that even if you have a vaccine, we'll all be started scratch again. So very bad situation. That's the good news, though, that a lot of countries support. The bad news, Germany, Angela Merkel have almost single-handedly blocked the rest of the entire world enacting this thing at the WTO. Germany's got the European Union literally blocking the whole process because the WTO works by consensus. And just tomorrow, Angela Merkel is coming to Washington, D.C. for a summit with President Joe Biden. And you guys are going to be ready, right? I mean, first of all, for people who don't get it, consensus means 100 percent of everybody has to agree. So one party saying, no, we don't want to have a waiver so that, you know, because without the waiver, of course, the only way to get these vaccines into these poorer countries is to have AstraZeneca or Pfizer manufacture them and sell them at absurd prices. With the waiver, they can be made. It's not going to hurt the vaccine companies. They're going to make a small uh, income from these vaccines being made in third world countries. And it could save us all if, if, if the next variant is twice as deadly or 10 times as deadly or whatever. Um, but uh, just just so people get it. But so I'm assuming that I, I've heard. I'm in fact, you know, I get your newsletter I, or your your emails, uh, you know, regularly, and it, it looks to me like even in Germany, Angela Merkel is facing a lot of, uh, shall we say, pushback, <laughs> gently, and and uh, that that you guys have plans for when she comes to D.C. Tell me about it. Well, what's very interesting is. We have seen across the U.S. already starting last weekend protests at German consulates all across the country. And if folks want to know how to get involved in these, you can go to tradewatch.org. There's a list of all the activities. There are 18 different consulate protests. A lot of them are still happening. There was a ginormous one today with hundreds of people in New York City, but there are more of them coming up tomorrow and over the weekend. And as well, in front of the White House, a huge banner saying Germany stop blocking the COVID vaccine waiver was floated up with the background of the White House. New York Times story today has that picture talking about the perversion of Merkel destroying her 16 year legacy where she was seen as really a, a world leader with some compassion. When Why she, is she doing opened this? opened up Germany for Syrian refugees and, you know, seemed like the, the face of democracy and in contrast to Trump acting like a lunatic. And yet here she is about to have the end of her legacy as a pharma shill. 
I mean, yeah. it's literally Merkel versus the world against people getting life-saving vaccines. I, you know, Angela Merkel is not an idiot. I mean, she, you know, she's got a PhD in chemistry, as I recall. Um, she's a very smart woman. She's a very competent politician, probably one of the most competent politicians in all of Europe. What possible rationalization is she using? And is her rationalization or excuse or whatever the right word is, is that popular in her own country, in Germany? So what's heartbreaking is um, one of the key rationalizations seems to be one that's pretty racist and neocolonialist. And that is that there's no point in making this waiver anyway, because those developing countries haven't the skill, the technology, the facilities to be able to make these medicines. So it wouldn't help. And the reality is, Tom, if you're in any place in Europe, in Germany, wherever, if you're in the U.S. a lot of times, then you need any number of different vaccines, flu, rabies, childhood vaccines. The likelihood is they're made in India. Right. by a place called the Serum Institute, which is produces an astonishing third of the world's vaccines. So the notion it can't be done is ridiculous. And in fact, right now in South Africa, in other countries, scores of companies are making vaccines for COVID. The problem is they're making the versions that are, say, the Russian ones that aren't quite as good and they need three shots, or they're making the ones that are, um, you know, vaccines that are harder to get around to people. And so we have basically the U.S. and Europe having these mRNA vaccines, the only approved ones. They're the fastest to scale up production because there are you know, there are no living cell lines. It's just all chemistry. And right. so lifting the patents, the copyrights and sharing that technology is the way to most quickly get the whole world vaccinated. So the argument you can't do it is baloney. Probably the real argument is just ugly, and it's not informed either. And that is, I think there's a sort of nationalism around the fact that one of the discoverers of those amazing mRNA vaccines is a German company called BioNTech. Right. But here's the part I don't get, because you're right, she's super smart, and she's, you know, a very competent politician. BioNTech sold the license for its creation. They're scientists there. They're not a manufacturing company. They sold it to Pfizer. So if a company is going to lose money on not being able to have absurd high prices, because Pfizer's acknowledged there's a global shortage of vaccine, they think next year they're getting away with charging $175 a shot after they say the, 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 the crisis is over in Europe and the U.S. Right now it's 20 bucks pandemic pricing. They reckon you don't get away with charging that much unless there's a shortage. Yeah. Pfizer, if anyone's going to lose money, is going to lose money. Not the German company. The German company gets whatever the licensing fee is for every met every. Right, and Pfizer is a publicly paid. held company, isn't it? Based here in the United States. It's a U.S. company. It is, and it is a huge manufacturer, and it has been a hundred percent refusing to make agreements with other companies, right. even to pay Pfizer to oh. make more volume. So Angela Merkel is essentially the Joe Manchin of the world when it comes to vaccines breaking but true but here's the thing everyone can help change this because number one if you go to tradewatch.org there is a big online action where at this point the german embassy in washington the main embassy is getting flooded tens of thousands of letters from americans basically saying angela merkel stop blocking this get out of the way of progress get germany on the right side of history and so you personally can help wave in tradewatch.org go to the action page but also, there's still a dozen or more of these protests around the country. So if you want to actually, and they're getting coverage, folks. They're getting coverage in, back in Germany. Our brothers and sisters who are trying also on the ground in Germany to move her are thanking us in the U.S. from helping them in partnership to try with solidarity to basically show she can't run, she can't hide. She needs to just get the hell out of the way of the vaccines. Yeah. And wherever she goes, she's going to be under heat. So there's, you know, everyone can help because literally it's like, it's just this one last straw that has to be fixed and we can get what we want. There you go. And you can find out all about it at tradewatch.org. Lori Wallach, the executive director. Lori, great talking with you again. Thank you so much.